Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. Demix and this is Total War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires Campaign and we continue where we left off last time with playing Lothurn and Tyrion and we had just established the province of Otain taking it from the Cult of Excess, Dark Elves. Um, so let's just get right into it. So we took the Tower of Lycian last time and uh, that was the last thing we did before ending the episode. Um, so straight away we can see we're going to have a public order problem soon, although part of that is nice to conquest and part of that is because of provincial instability. So 13 of that will go away, however military presence is counting for 4, so 4 will go back again once we leave on another conquest. So that takes us to a total of minus 6. So we need to get that into a position where it is at least stable, but preferably going up just even a little bit would be ideal. Um, so let's build... Uh, I think public order is affected by... No, it's not. Not for the, the High Elves, at least. Um, so, first of all, I will build a public order building here. Yes, and that goes all the way up to level 5. Um, perhaps worthwhile just building one, actually, and waiting for it to upgrade, because, as we can see, we get plus 10 public order if we let this upgrade all the way. So we'll build that. Um, as well as that, we'll also build... Let's see what else we can build. Uh, heavy arrowheads, archers, garrison, plus income from this. I don't think that's worthwhile. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to upgrade the uh, Shrine of Assyrian. Oh no, that's Angariel. Because, but uh, it's because I want the dock, so it doesn't really matter if I got the name wrong. It's this one that I want to upgrade. Um, because I would like to get a level 3 dock as soon as possible to increase our income from 400 to 600. Uh, and then... We can build a growth building here as well, which I think is worthwhile. Growth is quite a good thing to have early on in the game. We also need to uh, do a commandment. And to be honest, it might have been a good idea. In fact, you know, it'd be a very good idea to instead do this and wait until next turn. Because that will really help us with our income. Uh, so for this turn, we will continue upgrading Tyrion. Let's give him uh, Merchant Lord for faction-wide trade resources. And then we'll give him Draft Master. And then we'll finish off building his army. One more Spear, one more Archer, and then we're going to head straight to El Asili. And we need to push our advantage now. We have a massive army. Um, I don't know who else they're at war with. Perhaps no one. Yes, no one. So they may have a decent army just sitting ready to fight us. Um, we'll have to see about that. Uh, and we'll also upgrade our noble here. Valor of the Ages again. And then we'll give him hard to hit because the leadership bonus he provides is, is more valuable than the damage he does. Because of his animation, he's not really going to get a lot of kills. He will be good to get in hero against hero combat if we upgrade his damage, but I'd rather he stay alive and provided that leadership buff so that our men didn't run away. And then we'll skip building this turn, and we'll build next turn instead once the commandment is issued, because it isn't actually issued this turn, unless I'm getting something very wrong. I hope not, but I'm pretty sure it's not issued this turn. We need to wait till next turn, and then I'll say commandment established, and that will save us 20% on all our construction, which is a lot of a lot of gold given how much we're about to build. Okay, let's not waste any time. Let's start heading towards Elisali. Elisali? Elisali. Elisali. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. We'll move to Lotharum first. And then it's minus eight, uh, which will be five turns for 40. So it'll be six turns till rebellion at the current rate. However, we're going to build the plaza. So that commandment's now issued, right? Ah, perhaps I was wrong, you know? It doesn't say commandment issued, so perhaps I was wrong. To wait a turn. If so, that's a shame. But no matter. And we'll upgrade Angiriel. Um, and we'll build the growth building. 
champion of the Ever And with Tyrion, we will keep on moving. No, we won't, because we can't cross the river in time, so for income purposes, we will leave him here for a turn. Let's also check who likes us and who dislikes us now. Let's see if Illyrian think any better of us. Nope, still nothing. So we'll pass a turn there. It's also good that uh, we left Tyrion in there for replenishment. I just realised he's actually missing still quite a few troops on his Silver Helms. I think he only had 37 there, and if we'd moved him outside of of the um, of the settlement, his uh, replenishment rate would have gone quite vastly down, I believe. Erethond trespassing, surprising. It doesn't affect us. It doesn't affect him disliking us, so uh, not really a concern for me. And I definitely don't think there's any danger of him declaring war. I've never seen a enemy or ally or anything um, break a non-aggression pact yet. <laughs> Luckily for us, the AI is always reliable. <laughs> you can always count on them to act to, um, in a certain way. The Asa are troubled, awaiting orders. Okay, let's move. Let's go here first with 25% left so that if we want to, we can enter March Stance. See if we can get enough sight. We can't. Okay, Military Presence 10 suggests to me that they have a 20-man army. So we need to be careful here. Um, let's go right to the edge of our border. Not a 20-man army, 13-man. Uh, certainly beatable, though. He is recruiting as well. So, he's currently got a 13-man army, which I might be able to beat. Um, 23 overall. Not sure. Next turn, he might have up to 25, 26, and it might start becoming a bit, bit challenging. Let's return and see what he does. Because he's recruiting right now, you can see by this symbol. Mustering. What we could do is go in and raid and encourage him to come out and fight us to get rid of us. That's also a good option. Um, he may recruit a 20-man army and then come fight us in a 20 on 20, which would be fine. That would be fine. I I'm confident we would win that. Assuming he doesn't have anything too nasty in his army. I don't think he will, but you never know. The AI Legendary gets quite a few buffs early on, so he could do. Okay, plaza complete. We'd like to upgrade it, and we can next turn, and that'll take us from plus two to plus four, so I think that's worth doing. Uh, meanwhile, let's see what he's at now. 15, that's a 25-man army. It is beatable, and it is winnable. It's just whether I want to take the risk, really. Reaver archers, so that's chariot. Oh, no, no, it's uh, cavalry archers. Is that the last unit? So that's up to seven. So three more. Yeah, so that's the last unit. There's nothing hidden behind there. So Certainly he has got not. some cavalry in there. Tyrion, heir of Anarion. I think we may be able to do it. I'm just nervous about doing it, but let's do it. We need to Attack. make some we need to make some plays here, so hopefully this pays off. <laughs> By Asurian. Wow, he has a lot of Illyrian Spear Cavalry. We might end up turtling up then and trying to bait out the cavalry so we can take care of that before we send out our own. 
I may make a, uh, what do we have here? Leadership. Let's assign that to Tyrion himself. Just buff his leadership. The effect that he has. The uh, auto resolve is definitely in our favor, so the computer thinks we have the advantage. I'm assuming it's handing us that because of our level of our heroes. I think what we'll do is we will uh, make a bit of a, a square formation here because of their cavalry. Um, and we really need to make sure we take out their archers early on. Yeah, the archers and cavalry. That's the most important things. Spearmen are just, are just fluff for the High Elves. They're just there to just <laughs> be a barrier between the real battle that's going on, which is the archers against the archers, pretty much. So we're going to put you right as close to, as we can to that front line, and then we'll spread out our infantry accordingly once the battle begins. We'll shove some High, high Elf Spearmen here, and then Tyrion here, and a Noble here. White Lion! We'll have the white lions just here, just behind the center, just so they don't get shot by arrows in the beginning, but then they'll come through the middle and, and help with the uh, the middle of the line so that it doesn't get broken through too easily. And I'll keep my chariots. Where will I put them? I'm not sure. I'm scared to use them too much because I don't want them getting charged by the much faster Illyrian cavalry um, and taken out. So I'm going to keep them close in the beginning. And then we'll chart, we'll send them in once we've taken care of their Illyrian their Illyrian cavalry, which I think they'll use pretty early on. I'm expecting them to really just send them in and try and skirmish and look for weak points, and hopefully that will be our opportunity to take them out early in the game. So we'll see how that goes. We'll have you on the right hand side, we'll have the chariots on the left. Um okay. Let's get this going. Straight away, it wastes no time in spreading out our spears. Let's fill these gaps up with archers. Okay, good. We're going to get their cavalry early on, so let's get our cavalry ready to go and take out their... Uh, Archers. Yeah, there are their cavalry aren't gonna last long at all. Orders received. Kill them. Silver helms. Yes. Okay, it's not pleasant to see our spearmen taking this much fire, but uh, necessary for now. Let's send our noble forward. Send them forward to create a bigger gap. White lions here, and let's use our bows to take out their archers. Uh, we'll actually take out these archers because they're the ones that we won't be able to catch with our cavalry. Chariots on the Lothurn Sea Guards. Maximize our attacks on their archers. He's doing a fantastic job there. Of all the things I'd like my archers to be shooting at, I think um, the archers are the best right now, but let's just keep them occupied. Actually, you know what? We're going to take out the um, Lothurn Sea Guard if we can, because they are going to cause a bit of a pain for our um, our chariots running around the back there. Taking out their Illyrian archers, perfect. Where is... There we go, Curse of Anarian. That should help him out. White Lions of Kreis doing a good job. Let's keep our Ethelmar uh, chariots changing who they're attacking. 
Killing Lothar and Seaguard here. They should be fine against them. Let's keep moving these guys forward. Let's keep moving our other archers, uh, our horsemen, sorry, just so that they keep the ar their archers occupied. Perfect. Uh, also, guard mode should be on. Let's finish these archers off. You guys are engaged there. Excellent. Our Ithilmar chariots are taking three archers out of the game. And this is where we really win it, because we've got their archers completely tied up, whereas ours are firing constantly. And that makes such a big difference. Plus, their lord is dead. Another big difference. And once their archers route, I mean, their spearmen are, are sure to follow. A couple of good charges here, and we'll have them. Let's shove you guys over on these. Spearmen in behind. They're starting to fold here. You guys shoot on these. Ah, actually, they're not finished yet. And let's bring these chariots in to the back of these spearmen. This should be a really... This is... I can't miss this, actually. Let's just do it. <laughs> let's just do it now. Fire on those archers. If them are chariots, line up quickly. Oh, this is going to be a very nice charge. Don't worry, guys. Here we come. Here we come. Look at the devastation from those chariots and although it doesn't look like they hit as many targets and they don't they take more damage on each of the units that hit the, the, the likelihood that most of those units died is, is much higher the chariots do a lot more damage on that impact than cavalry do um, you know it's, it's very satisfying to see the cavalry hit so many units but those units that they hit most of them if not all of them tend to get back up because they're on full health they're at the back of the pack not the front and so um, most of them will get back. Are still devastating, don't get me wrong. But the chariots doing that char that same charge is just so strong. And there we have it. Um, a fairly easy battle to win with the correct cavalry control. The I mean, we get the advantage because the AI is not very clever with its um, with its cavalry. I mean, it could if it was smart, it could tie us up much better with all that light cavalry it had than we ever could. But obviously, the AI. He's not smart, thank God. Otherwise, we'd all be serving them. <laughs> we'd all be serving them by now. If that were the case. Let's get some free XP on our units here. So many of their spears. I always thought it's it must be terrible in high elf society when they go... You know, you go join the military and they go, Congratulations! You're not a very good shot, so you're a spearman. It's like, oh god. The chances of me dying has just increased severely. <laughs> Definitely the highest casualty rate unit in the High Elf army. The poor High Elf spearman. Another close victory, but a victory nonetheless. Let's see, 221 kills for the chariots, so really doing their job well there. 170 for the Silver Helms too. So uh, doing exactly as we need them to do, just tying up the enemy archers, stopping them from getting kills. And you can see 12, 6, 11, 13 versus 125, 110. And our lowest score was 58. You know, when you compare that with our lowest ca uh, archer kills is 6. That's a big difference. Fear the might of Ulf One. Yep, 17 kills for their highest scoring archers. So really not a lot. And that's a really big gain there, because that's wiping out their army as well. So we'll occupy that. Uh, we'll gain levels, which is good. Lightning Strike early on, definitely. And Quartermaster to increase the gold again. Then I'm actually going to take two points in Replenishment. Oh, I can only take one. Fair enough. Um, we'll give him hard to hit again then as well. Thought I might have been able to sneak two in there, but unfortunately not. Ah, we're at war with Kothik as well. I'd love a peace treaty, to be honest. That's a lot of troops you're sending my way. Yes, an absurd number of troops. I agree. 16 and 13, that's 29. Wowee. Uh, now, my luck never holds, so the chance of them attacking Alessa Lee with a 27-man garrison is almost... The Zero. Let's build the colonnade. And we'll pass our turn there. We'll just check diplomacy first, actually. Just keep trying for that non-aggression pact. So, if I recall correctly, the people who hate you 
on Lothurn are randomly generated. I think it changes between games. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. I think Everest are usually at war with you, but sometimes Safari like you. I've, I've had it that they like you. Um, although this is my first SFO gameplay, so I don't know how it affects the diplomacy. Um, but Kothik being at war with me right at the start, I don't remember that. So, um, yes, we'll deal with that shortly. Hopefully it doesn't mess us up too much. Because that is a big army on its way down. I have been streaming a lot recently, and uh, I stream a lot of Total War, and... I can definitely say it's easier to concentrate on playing when I'm recording for YouTube. I'm still talking and stuff, but when I'm not having to read a chat log ever, I just get to concentrate fully on the game. It really makes me play better, you know, for obvious reasons. I'm not having to multitask or anything. And multitasking, chatting socially, it's, it's a big, it's actually a big thing to do, you know. You have to, it's a totally different part of your brain from just monologuing. I'm just monologuing right now. I can just keep talking. It doesn't take much effort to just keep chatting away. Whereas to actually respond, think about, consider things that other people are saying is, uh, especially if it's off topic as well, right? Especially if it's off topic. It's really difficult. Um, I, at least I find it difficult. I've never been much good at multitasking. So if they come closer enough next turn, I will engage them. Okay, we've got a chance to get some influence, and we only have one option that we can actually do. This won't really affect us much anyway. Another 4,000 gold from our objective as well, so that's good. We'll use that straight away. Uh, let's upgrade the Shrine of Assyrian next. Because it's the most likely one to come under attack, I think. Kalidor like us. Uh, Toralis don't dislike us. Whereas Safari look like they may declare war on us. So uh, Shrine of Assyrian to get a gate. We'll also build a gate on Angariel. And then uh, let's also build something to get cavalry, I think. Because we want cavalry early on. They make a massive difference on the high elf battlefield. As you saw, tying up the archers. You can use one cavalry unit to tie up two, three perhaps even four with the chariot, you know, units of archers and stop them firing. And that wins you the entire battle, you know, because your archers just keep firing while theirs are tied up with cavalry. No, unlikely. So we'll see what these unlikely. guys have. This is going to be 20. No. Are they suffering attrition? I swear they had Impossible. more. I thought it was 16 and 13. Now it's 14 Impossible. and 11. No. Well, that's good news. They got rid of some troops. I don't know why or how, but they did. So, um... Hopefully that works in our favor. When they get here, I will engage them. Ever vigilant. I would have liked to continue on to Tur... 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 Tur Ivris, I think we'll call it. Tur Ivris. But I don't think it's wise until these guys come in range. And they're going to come in range next turn if they are going to attack us. Which looks almost certain. I can't imagine why they'd be sailing down here if they weren't planning to attack us. I'm, uh, I've, I've changed my style as well since I started streaming. I've learned a lot from streaming. You get a lot of people coming in who are experts in Total War, thousands of hours, who enjoy watching it still as well as, as, well as playing it. And uh, the amount of tips you get is amazing. And one of the things I would say has, has certainly... Um, oh, there they go. They're running away. Well, that changed their mind for whatever reason. And uh, one of the things I've certainly changed about my game play style is, is getting a lord early on. So I'd really like to get 60 influence as soon as possible um, in order to get a lord, a second lord on the go, and, and no turtling at all. Just keep pushing out, keep applying pressure everywhere and expanding as quickly as possible. Because the quicker you expand, the more money you make, the more you can upgrade your, your home settlement, your home province. Get the elite units early on, and if you get the elite units before anyone else does, then you start absolutely steamrolling, you know? So you just got to keep the steamroller going. Once you've got the steamroller on a downhill slope, you just keep it going, you know? Don't apply the brakes. Razor Sack Tor Korula Koruali. Well, that would certainly be good. That would certainly be good if we could do that. Um, so he left. 
servant of the king. You know what I should have been doing while I was sitting here? I probably should have been doing this to get four influence per turn, because that would have been eight influence extra. Does this cost anything to adopt? 50% of my campaign movement range, so I don't think I'd like to do that. Military presence 11, so they've already raised a big army there in the time it's taken for us to do what we are doing. Okay, so I think we'll move anyway. We need to, we, as I said, we need to keep the pressure up. So that's what we'll do. We'll move up here. See if we can see what army... Wow, he's already raised 11 man. Although if we can get them inside, those cavalry will be completely negated. I'm quite happy to face them inside the settlement. Uh, actually, I'm quite happy to face them either way. Hopefully we can reach their next turn. That would be really good. Let's upgrade Tower of Lycian. And the growth. Why not? One turn, and then we'll have another two, so it'll only be minus two, and that'll give us another ten turns um, before we get a rebellion. So we should, and, and in that time, hopefully, we can build another public order building and stop it altogether. So we should be okay at home. Uh, let's check our agents as well. Nothing yet. I didn't think so. I think we have to have a level three. Order must be maintained. No, not even level three. We have to have something else. Talons of Torquilita. So I haven't played High Elf SFO, and there's lots of new units to check out as well. So things like this, anti-infantry, fire whilst moving. Dual sword and bow infantry. Very cool. Although I'm not very much a fan. I was never a fan of Lutheran Seaguard, because I find them to be a waste of money. It's like, if you if they're ever engaged in melee, you know, they're, what's the point? You might as well have spearmen. They're just a poor man's spearmen at that point. Um, they have the ability to shoot, but what's the point? You know, you could just have them as spearmen and have, you know, the, the spearmen upkeep is, is 129, archers 107, whereas one Lutheran Seaguard, if you look at that right there, is 256, so the upkeep of two is worth one. And, you know, you want your archers firing, so if I had these guys, I would just be trying to keep them firing arrows all the time anyway, so it'd be wasted. So I, I don't, I really don't see the point of them, if I'm honest. Um, I think it'd be better having, having twice as many troops um, doing twice the work than having one of those. Cool unit concept though, don't get me wrong, but not worth it. I think they should have made the upkeep less to make them worth just a bit more, but certainly a lot less than it is, but then it'd probably be overpowered, so... for a faction that's already very strong. I'm gonna keep trying this every turn just to make sure that uh, when it becomes available we can get it. And I'll pass our turn there. He's still mustering, so that is going to be uh, one hell of a combat. Hopefully this garrison stays at nine um, so that we can ensure that we'll be okay. If I can reach their next turn, that'll stop him mustering and hopefully keep him at around a 20-man garrison, which should be more than manageable for us. No elite units really coming from there if it's only a nine-man garrison in the capital city there. War declared between every and Kreis, as if they've not got enough problems with us on the horizon. <laughs> They're really pulling out all the stops. So I'm going to try and get more YouTube videos back up on this channel. Um, I know it's been inconsistent for anyone who's been following the channel, but... Um, it's just because I'm streaming so much, but uh, I definitely want to keep doing YouTube as well. I really do enjoy just being able to sit smiles upon me. and do, do YouTube. It is quite nice. My, we can't really afford that right now. We will end up getting a rebellion if I do this, so I'm not going to do that. That's okay. Minus six to own. Oh, that's even better. Let's just do this. 15 for 750. I'm quite happy with that. Ensure that the following building has been constructed. Quesh issued. Promenade. Promenade? The Asser of Troubles. Seaport. I'm not sure where the promenade is. Uh, building browser. Elven Forge, Elven... I'm really not sure what that is. A promenade. 
And I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> oh, there it is. Level 3. Oh, okay, that's no problem. Okay, yeah, we're going for that anyway, so... Um, that's fine. We need 2 growth and 3,200 to upgrade to level 2, which would be nice. That would be nice because it would secure... It would give us a, enough of a garrison that I'd pretty much be safe, confident we won't lose Lothurn anymore. Um, so I might start going for that as soon as possible. Elf one's defender. Oh dear, I don't think we can quite reach. Maybe. Seven, but we can. Excellent. Kill okay, them. let's go straight there then. Oh no. By That's not good. What is good though is that their army is almost entirely composed of cavalry. So if we can just get one turn, uh, I will be happy to engage that. And then what we'll do is we will, although we'll have a battering ram, we won't use it. We'll just take the walls um, with our superior archer firepower. Sunfang hungers. But that other guy is very close. Ridiculous. He'll be able to engage next turn if he wants to. I don't know if they're allied though, so if they're not out, let's we'll see. Let's check them out. Kothik. They're not allied, so if he engages, I don't think they'll fight together, even though it would make a lot of sense if they did, I don't think they will. Hopefully I'm right about that. <clears throat> okay, so let's pass our turn, see what happens. Maybe they will. In which case, it'll be one hell of a battle with that much cavalry. And then we'll definitely just be doing a, a good old-fashioned square formation um, with the archers inside with against that many cavalry. It wouldn't even be a bad thing for them to sally out. I would actually potentially prefer it. Because we could just go for a good old-fashioned square formation, as any Total War players will be very familiar with. Pikes in front, archers behind. No, he retreated. But he is sallying out, okay. Okay, let's do this. I'm quite happy with that. With the amount of cavalry he has, um, I think he's making the right choice. But, oh, that's gutting. That is devastating. Oh, well, that's the easiest victory we've ever had. <laughs> oh, wow. It's a bridge battle. That's so harsh. <laughs> That's so harsh. Oh well, we win. <laughs> you know what would have been just the the cherry on the cake is if the reinforcements came in here so we could have quickly wiped them out. But I prefer it this way. I do prefer this way. So we'll have Spearman here. Spearman here. And Lothurn in the middle. Just slightly back. Or will we have we'll have you know what we'll have three. We'll have three spearmen. Spearman. Eager for battle. Shove him there. Three seems a bit more reasonable. I just wanted to have some reserves, to be honest. I think though. I think almost all of them will come down this path here. Archers. Um I'm quite confident of that in fact. So I will line up as if that is the case at first. I'll have him in the middle as well just so he can come support here if necessary. Um, okay, this should be good. I'm excited for this. This will be a good looking battle I think. The white lions here as well. The glorious white lions. Looking good, guys. Let's rain some death on the enemy. Like you said, let's go. Let's do it. Archers. It will be done. Stick them in guard mode so that they don't go running off. That would be a terrible, terrible blow to our army if they did. And let's speed it up so that they come closer quickly. 
So the one thing that might happen here is their uh, archers might open fire on my spirit. Nope, it's okay. Okay, let's slow this down now and have the battle at proper speed. Once they come a little bit closer, in fact, you know what? I'm going to do it now. We're going to move our spearmen up. Tyrion's going to move up, and the, the back line of archers are going to move forward so that the range is now completely filled. The range gap is completely closed. I'm also going to pull these spearmen just behind in reserve to bolster the uh, charge defense so that they can't charge through and hit my archers. I'm going to pull another archer, a spearman line from there, shove them here, and we'll shove these white lions across in here. Have these two spread out a little bit just to make sure that we're okay, although this looks like we're fine, and we'll have this cavalry move up. Let's get the noble down here as well. It looks like this is where it's going to... This is what looks like it's, this is where it's all going to go down, doesn't it? I'll just keep letting our guys free fire. Although, actually, I prefer if you guys focused on them, please, lads. I'm not going to lie. Oh, there we go. Okay, back off a bit, back off a bit. Stay there as well. Okay, here they come. Here they come. Brace yourselves. Strong charge defense from the spears. Solid, solid charge defense. Very good. Let's get Tyrion up. Let's get the nobles up. White Lions of Krace move forward. And let's put all of these guys on guard mode as well. So they don't go running off. Perfect. Let's get in on Aramar. These guys haven't got quite the same charge defense, but they still held well. Still held very well. We will obey. We will obey. Following orders. Let's help them. These guys can actually push forward. I'm happy for them to push a bit. Because we should win that exchange, I think. But this one is just going to be a massacre. We will obey. Uh, can you guys reach them, please? Try and try and hit them. Battle calls! Acknowledged! Death to all! Try and hit these archers. They're probably doing more damage than anything else is. Archers! By your command! It will be done! It shall be done! Loyal! Setting forth! Forward! Without fail! Kill them! No more! Destroy them! The king! For duty, following orders! Black Eye! Archers! Kill them! I actually expected our spearmen to hold up a lot better than they're holding up. They defeated Aramar, though. That's good. Goodness, our middle spearman took a beating. Let's try and get rid of the final archers here. They really are taking casual. We are taking casualties from their archers. It's not good. Let's get them completely gone. stuff fire on them and then we will back up a bit how are we doing over here we should be doing fine we are they're cycle charging very well let's bring these spearmen to this front line here okay archers back up get a nicer angle on this front line here which is about to fold a little bit it is, it is not far away from folding. Luckily, we got our generals in there doing a good job of keeping leadership up. You stay there. You shift left and try and take out their lord. 
Now, luckily we have high elf archers who are incredibly accurate. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't let that... That's the worst thing that could happen. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen is if these guys broke away behind us and charged us in the back. That's a recipe for disaster. Just in time, our last reserves of spearmen arrive to plug the gap. That's perfect. Shattered them. Let's send these spearmen to help hold this line. And it's not needed. We have the victory. We need it. There we go. Just in time, too. Our archers are starting to run out of ammo. Send them forward a bit. Make sure that they uh, take as many casualties as possible. And we killed their general, too. Now, I don't know if we take... I don't think that finishes their... Um, I don't think that finishes the siege, but it should make our job a lot easier next turn, that's for sure. Let's try and take out as many of their troops as possible just to absolutely finish the job. So that our siege is so easy this turn. But lucky for them, they got to run away through the trees, which is really slowing our cavalry down. Actually, not hit that grip, you'll just get but you'll get more kills from it. them in time. No, we won't. Okay, great battle. Great battle. Uh, I don't think that gives us the settlement, as I say, but it should make our uh, our attacking the siege far easier. They only have 652 troops remaining versus our near on, uh, near on 1500, so um, should be very easy. Again, our archers coming in clutch. Um, they could. They didn't really. I mean, they didn't really stand a chance there. As soon as it was a bridge battle, it was already a guaranteed victory and an easy one at that. Ransom the captives for extra treasury. I think we'll go for the uh, extra treasury money. Uh, you know what? Actually, no. I don't want to lose too much. I'll take the replenishment. No, will I? I'm not sure. Goodness, let's go for the experience. Have done with it. <laughs> there we go. Um, and that's where I'll end the episode, guys. So uh, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Let me know that uh, you liked what I did, if you did indeed like it. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Uh, so, as soon as this saves, <laughs> that's bye from me for now. Okay, see you next time, guys. Bye.